Okay, so this lecture is about the uh, graph editor, which is one of the most important uh, menus in Maya. I've got the graph editor open down here. Um, as you can see, we've got a three-way split um, going on here, and the way to find that is to go to Panels, Saved Layouts. Um, well, actually, if you go to Panels, Layouts, Three Panes, Split Top, that's where I um, uh, that's where I went to to get uh, this um, three-way split layout um, and in fact I've saved it so if I go to window uh, saved layouts it's down at the bottom of this list here you actually can't see it unfortunately because it's slightly off the screen uh, but uh, down here just below stereo perspective is a button called animation which I created uh, earlier so um, the good thing about this layout and this is very much a standard animators layout is we've got the perspective view here on the right uh, the orthographic side view there on the left and then the graph editor underneath. Uh, I'm just going to um, uh, name this sphere um, and actually while I'm doing it I'm going to show you a tool which uh, or a, a menu which I haven't shown you before and that's called the outliner uh, and here under window if you go to this one here click on outliner you it pulls up a new um, separate window uh, and you can see inside a thing called P-Sphere 1 and that's our ball so I'm just going to double click on it and I'm going to name it ball and the reason you have to name everything in uh, Maya is for the same reason that you need to observe proper naming conventions when you save your work and that is so that when other people open up your shot and go into it it's not just a mess of um, uh, different elements but a properly named and properly structured um, uh, uh, group of objects and uh, this, this enables other people to understand what's going on in your shot. The outliner, generally speaking, um, shows you it is, it is an outline of what's in your shot. So for example, if we were to, um, if I were to press Control D and duplicate this ball, so now we've got two balls, you'll see that we've now created ball one, or from ball one we've created ball two. Uh, sorry, from ball, Maya has now created ball one. And if I uh, pre hit backspace to delete it, it disappears. So uh, the outliner is a very useful little tool um, uh, and very important to get to know. But I'm just gonna close it for now. Um, and I'm gonna create, um, just to uh, show you the basics of the graph editor, I'm gonna create some very very basic animation. So here at uh, uh, frame 1 I'm going to set a key and I'm going to set a key by hitting S in the keyboard and what that does is it makes the channel box go red means that now keys have been set uh, and a keyframe you'll see appears down here in our timeline at frame 1. Uh, now if I go to frame 48 that's two seconds later because film runs at 24 frames a second, I can now create a new keyframe by moving this ball into place there. Now Maya has not automatically created a keyframe for me here and the reason for that is this little key here is turned off. I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to click on that and call it uh, uh, and, 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 and turn that on so it's now red. What this little button does is it's called auto key and if auto key is turned on then whenever I move this ball it will now automatically create a keyframe for me. So what we've done is to set a key at frame 1 and set a key at frame 48 and we now have uh, in, just in the um, uh, in, in, in translate Z just in translate Z. Now if I go to the graph editor here and I hit A in my uh, keyboard it's going to show me the entire curve. So this, whoops, this ball is now moving from its start position at frame 1 to frame 48. And if I press this little button here, uh, which is the play button, um, it's, going to, uh, it's going to travel forward. Now, you'll see it's traveling in a very strange direction and you will notice that it is not in fact taking two seconds to get from frame 1 to frame 48. The reason for that is I don't have my preferences properly set, so I'm going to have to go in and do that now. And the preferences button is down here. That's this little button down here on the right. 
and if I click on that uh, sorry that's the script editor excuse me forgive me uh, it's this little button here the, the, the one just above it if I click on that that opens up my preferences and you can see that there now there's lots of stuff going on here but what we want is to go into uh, animation settings well, actually I think we want to just click on settings yes we just click on uh, settings here and make sure that our playback speed well, actually that's working units so perhaps it is under animation after all um, uh, time slider yeah here we go I usually find that even though I've been using Maya for about uh, a decade I still forget where things are and what you will find is that as you're using Maya you get more and more used to it but you still have to do a little bit of digging to find um, uh, exactly what it is that you're looking for so here under time slider I'm gonna change playback every frame to real time that's 24 frames per second so I'm gonna change that to real time and I'm now going to uh, save that um, actually while I'm there I'm gonna show you something else so I'm gonna go back into preferences just click on that again uh, and I'm gonna click on undo now the undo button that's the little Z button on your keyboard that enables you to undo stuff and um, at the moment undo is switched on as it should be and our queue size is 50 that means you have 50 undos you can hit the Z button 50 times and it will undo 50 keystrokes you can click on infinite if you want and then you will have infinite undos the only problem with that is that it does make your shots rather heavy so what I would recommend is you click finite and then change that to 100 and now you will have 100 undos in your shot which really should be enough for any man uh, any more than that and you you're in trouble um, but 100 100 undos is probably about right so I'm gonna click on save okay so now if I go back to my perspective view and I press play we'll now find that the ball is traveling forward and it's taking it about two seconds to get there from frame 1 to frame 48 and we can count it off we can go um, uh, 1 1000 1, 2 1000 1000 1, 1000 2 1000 because that's about how you time stuff out in animation 1 1000 2 1000 3 1000 4 1000 5 1000 that is five seconds that's a rough and ready way of timing stuff out but let's look down here I'm just gonna um, select the graph editor here hit um, the spacebar and that's gonna show me uh, the graph editor and you can see that the only um, uh, uh, keys or the, the only channels which have been keyframed yet are translate Z there's nothing else that's been set on any of the other keyframes and so what that does what the graph editor is telling us is that there is motion in translate Z there's another theory lecture about this by the way so if you're uh, you should probably watch that first because that gives you a general theory of how the graph editor works and then you can look at this um, uh, technical lecture afterwards so I rec do recommend that you watch the theory video first I'm now going to hit the spacebar again so I go back to my multi view but what the graph editor is doing is showing us that there are there are keyframes in in translate Z here or translate Z uh, taking us uh, from frame 1 to frame 48 and we can see that uh, basically what's happening is the ball is speeding up and slowing down we've got a an ease out and then an ease in at the end the ball is starting off slow speeding up in the middle and then slowing down at the end and the reason we know this is because what the graph editor does is it calculates time and distance time is in the x-axis here uh, that is to say we start at frame one there and we end at frame 48 there that's two seconds that's time I can stop at frame say 24 that's halfway through and that would be halfway through in terms of time distance or value is calculated in the y-axis and I can see here at frame 24 that the uh, ball has traveled about half its distance from the beginning to the end but if I go here to frame 9 I can see that the ball has actually almost traveled no distance at all in the y-axis um, and that's because 
the ball is actually traveling very slowly here at the beginning and then it's speeding up in the middle and then slowing down at the end and I can tell all of that without even looking at the animation I can tell all of that just by looking looking at the graph editor here now we can change these values I can for example I can select uh, the start point here and then I can select this little handle and move it like that and then I can do the same with the one at the end I can select it and move it like that and I now know that there's going to be no slow in at the beginning and no slow in at the end or no slow out at the beginning and no slow in at the end I now know that this ball is going to travel in a completely straight line and if I press play here that is now a completely continuous flat slow motion okay so if I click on that ball again I hit A in the graph editor A is for all and that means that um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm showing all of the curves now I can also fiddle with those curves again I can select that one then uh, uh, select a handle and I can uh, uh, drop it down like that and then I can select this handle and then drop that one down like that now this is what this is going to do is it's going to make the ball start off very slowly and then speed up so this would be simulating an object that's starting off very slow and then gaining pace and if I press play now well, the ball is actually going slightly backwards at the beginning which we probably don't whoops which we probably don't want uh, so I'll just change that a little bit but you can see there that the ball starts off very very slow and picks up speed and I can tell that just by looking at the graph editor because moving down here we get halfway through the shot and at frame 24 which is halfway through in terms of time but the ball has traveled almost no distance in the y axis what the y axis which is to say distance it's traveled a great deal in time but very little in distance uh, we can produce the opposite effect by moving this uh, one here like that and then selecting this guy here and now we're going to have some a ball that is going to start off very very quickly traveling a great deal of distance in a short amount of time and then slowing down traveling much less distance less distance less distance in a large amount of time and we can even flatten off whoops flatten off this tangent at the end by pressing the flatten tangents button here and that will just flatten that one off and now it the ball will start off very very slow and end up slowing in at the end oh, sorry start off very very fast and slow in at the end okay so this is the basics of the graph editor it is incredibly important to get used to the graph editor the graph editor is your friend and that's why when you're animating you should always have this three-way split view perspective view up here an orthographic side view here and then the graph editor down below and what that does is it enables you to see um, uh, your object in two different views and also keep an eye on the curves because it's incredibly important to monitor the curves if uh, because you will find that the graph editor is where you do a great deal of your work and uh, mastering the graph editor is is difficult I mean it will take you a while to figure this stuff out uh, but once you get it the graph editor becomes your best friend an incredibly useful and powerful tool so the way we had this um this one before was uh, um, I'm going to show you there's a slow in and then slow out at the end now what this is doing is uh, Maya is automatically giving you a, 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 an ease out and then an ease in at the end and what this is called is called spline curves we're in spline curves mode here and so we can change all of this um, uh, by changing the curves a spline curve gives you an automatic slow in and slow out um, and we can actually change the settings by going back into our preferences that was this little button down here so for example I can um, change the um, the curves if I go to the animation settings and then I scroll down a bit here um, uh, and um, uh, wait a minute uh, looks like in Maya 2012 they may have actually um, uh, 2013 they may have actually moved some of this stuff around every time that Maya comes out with a new version <laughs> they, uh, they move all of the uh, they change things a bit and sometimes it's uh, a little bit difficult to uh, find here we go um, so what we want is um, uh, uh, 
uh, default in tangent spline default out tangent spline if I if I save that then any time I set a new keyframe let's say I say I set a new keyframe at frame 24 it's going to automatically make that a spline curve if I go back and change that again um, let's say I wanted to um, uh, uh, let's just go back into animation I can make that a linear curve and a linear curve will give me a completely uh, straight curve rather like uh, the ones that I showed you uh, in uh, in the beginning so I can make that completely straight and that is effectively that is a linear curve and we can also do that in the graph it in the window here by just selecting those curves and if I if I click on um, this one little button here that will straighten everything out actually will it um, uh, you see you you've got uh, the option here uh, of going to these various curves um, uh, that's plateau tangents that's stepped curves which I'll come to flat tangents they that's um, uh, linear tangents uh, and uh, uh, clamps we don't need to worry about and spline and spline is um, uh, uh, spline will automatically give you an, an ease in and ease out uh, usually you're animating in uh, spline curves but it does depend um, I'll just show you quickly what um, stepped curves do if I select these and then go to um, uh, uh, where's stepped step tangents there that's that that's this button here if I click on this um, step tangents uh, will give me a shot that looks like this click 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 and what Maya is doing is it's leaving the ball in exactly the same place and then it's popping into uh, the pose at frame 48 uh, and the reason it's doing that is because you're you're basically shooting a kind of a pose test here um, stepped uh, um, um, animating in, in stepped curves is very useful when you're doing pose to pose animation and we'll come back to that later on but for now we'll just stay in um, uh, uh, in, in spline mode um, now the other thing you can do in the graph editor is you can move your keys around so for example I've got this keyframe set at frame 48 but let's say I want to move it to frame 24 and make this exactly or 25 and make this exactly one second long I can change this value down here, change that to 25, and now I've got a shot that's lasting exactly one second. So now we've got a one second, one one thousand, and I can I can move these keys around as much as I want in the, in the graph editor. So you can see the graph editor is a very very powerful tool for understanding animation, and it's well worth getting to grips with it. In fact, you will have to get to grips with it uh, in order to be able to use Maya. Uh, and we'll do the uh, bouncing ball exercise uh, and, and really what that exercise is about is about beginning to learn to control the graph editor to make it work for you.